Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can find inversions of chords on the guitar. Chord inversions are iterations of a chord where the chord tones, the individual notes that make up the chord, are in a different order. It actually officially means that the bottom note is a different note than the root or you know whatever note is on the bottom is defining the inversion of the chord but a lot of times they're thought of as actually uh, just a permutation of the order of whatever notes are in the chord um, so if you have three notes in a triad a one a three and a five or a root a third and a fifth and that root is on the bottom if you throw that root over and put it on the top and we're going to do this on the guitar in a second then you have an order now that is three, five, one, the third, the fifth, and the root. And now the third is on the bottom. So this is the first inversion. It doesn't have to be an exact flip of that order. It could just be that you throw the third on the bottom. The bass player just plays the third, regardless of what's happening on top. And that is considered first inversion. Um, but we're going to do a pretty systematic way to look at it on the fretboard so you can really clearly find inversions of almost any chord form that you're used to playing or wanting to explore. If you take the third of the chord now and put that on, flip that on the top from the iteration that we had a second ago, and the fifth is on the bottom, now we have the fifth and then the root and then the third, now we have second inversion. Cool. The It's a little confusing sometimes calling first inversion means saying first inversion means that the third is on the bottom and it can get confusing because you want to say almost it's third inversion because the third is on the bottom or first inversion because the one is on the bottom uh, but that's not quite right the root being on the bottom can just be called root position and then the first time you invert it you the third is the, when the third is the lowest note that's the first inversion the second time you invert it when the fifth is the lowest note that's the second inversion if there's a seven in the chord and you have a root a third a fifth and a seven if the seven is on the bottom then that's third inversion of the chord so there can even be fourth inversions of chords where the nine is on the bottom and sometimes people will call them that uh, but we're just going to do uh, triads and seventh chords here um, so it's really quite simple if we take any chord then we want to look at we need to be able to identify what chord tones are in that chord so that alone the fact that we have to do that is really valuable already it's going to make you think on the fretboard what is what what am i playing what notes am i playing so i'm going to take uh, i'm going to give us several examples here so let's take a let's go ahead and take a d chord something that a lot of us are comfortable with familiar with understand playing a d chord and we'll do this with several uh, common chords and then some seventh chords as well. So again, first step is we have to identify what is what. Okay, so we have to find that. The, taking the time to figure it out on your own, if you have any tools or knowledge to do that, is, is what I recommend. Rather than looking it up or check somewhere where you had it written down, you know, having it take longer because you're really trying to investigate for yourself, um, where is the root? And how can I figure that out? You know, what do I know on the fretboard already where, that can allow me to search for that. And even if that took you like an hour, that's like amazing study time, practice time, much better than if you just saw a diagram of it and, and were like, oh yeah, yeah, and you're reminded, right? Because it shows you the tools and the map for how you can figure it out. It's kind of like showing your work in math and it means you really know it and understand it. And that will get quicker until you do just have it. And so that's that's really um, more valuable time spent. I mean, it's worth putting time into to finding that stuff. So, but let's say you took that time and you found it or you know that information already. Um, well, it's a D chord, so we know D is the root. This open D is the root. This note here on the second string, third fret is the octave of the root so that's also the root and then we would need to find the other ones this top note on the top string is the third one two three if you counted from one you can find the numbers from anything and that leaves this note being the five the third string second fret is the five if we counted from one one two three four five we get to five so we have one five one three Cool. Step one, phase one, identifying everything. We're doing that. Got it. Now, as far as having uh, wh which notes of those are we going to be able to invert, it's actually not going to be all of them. And with every chord, um, we don't want to just use every note that we're playing. So if you're playing a big E major chord, we can't just 
invert that whole thing. We have to take a little piece of it, a little piece of the complete chord. So back to D, the piece, and I said piece of the complete chord, but really just find a place where you, you have the complete chord, the one, the three, and the five somewhere, okay? So in this case, we can, we can do two versions of it. Let's eliminate this root that is the open D and just take this shape up here. Five, one, and three. We have the complete chord now. So we we're, we're wanting to eliminate uh, doubled notes, right? We had two roots. We got rid of one of those roots. So we just have the one, the three, and the five, the kind of um, essential notes that we need without anything being doubled up. And now, because we know this theory of f having found uh, where is one, where is three, where is five, um, just along each string, this is more kind of fretboard finding, uh, fretboard mapping where you're gonna have to think through things and it's so worth the time even if you feel like you're not playing notes to to think through this if it's if it's challenging for you um, and and find these notes you will know the fretboard so much better we're gonna take each string and say okay well this bottom note is the five and five is gonna go up every note is gonna go up to whatever the next chord tone available next closest chord tone is so five is always going to go up to one if we're on a triad one on the same string is going to go up to three three on the same string that it was on is going to go up to five okay so you just go up to wherever the closest chord tone is along that same string and boom you have the inversion so five is going to go up to one which happens to be here you can kind of hear that sound there five one five one five six seven one that's how we find it. I say in so many videos, I talk about the structure of the major scale because we're always, always going to be needing that and referencing that back. If you know the structure of the major scale really well, just the structure of it, we're not even talking about note names here. We're just saying the structure of the major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, half step between three, four, half step between seven and one. If you know that well, you'll find any of these no problem because I know this is five. I know five to six is a whole step. I know six to seven is a whole step. And I know seven and one is a half step. So I found five, six, seven, one to go five to one. So if you know that, it's going to force you to kind of think and count in that way. Or you might just see it. You might just say, well, here's five, where's one? But but if you see it, it's because you've kind of worked your way up to that through this way that I'm I'm talking about doing by knowing the major scale so well. So um, the next one is the root here on the on string two, and the root is gonna go to three. So because one, two, three, well, two's not in the chord, three's the next chord tone. Okay, awesome. If you know your major scale, one, two, three. Okay, so one to two is a whole step, two to three is a whole step as we talked about, and there it is. Now we have these two notes right here. Got it. Three was on the top string, in this chord and we know that three okay four is not a chord tone five yes that's a chord tone that's the next one three and four are half step apart so you skip that you go up to five four to five is a whole step in the major scale structure so here it is here's that inversion d d complete d chord complete d chord okay five one three one three five okay great Okay, if you throw that any other notes in there, you can just play with these as a structure. Cool, gives you a little bit of motion to play with. Let's do it again. I'll do it quickly for the next inversion. There's only going to be three versions, uh, three inversions, I guess. The root position is not necessarily an inversion, but there's going to be three shapes that we get to total because there's only three notes, right? So you only have a version of it with the root on the bottom one with the third on the bottom and one with the five on the bottom. And then it, if you keep doing that, you get, you'll get back to the original shape. So we're going to do that. Here's the root. I'm going to do it quickly now because you, you get the idea. Here's the root. It's going to go up to three on that same string. Here's the three. It's going to go up to five on that same string. Here's the five. It's going to go up to one on that same string. Ah, very nice. It's exactly the sound that we're looking for. Um, you know, technique wise, if you want to, and, and just to visually have a sense of the fretboard well, definitely practicing just bouncing between them is a great way to work on it once you see that. Okay. If I do it again, three to five on the same string, five to one on that same string, and then one to three, and we get that shape that we started with, but an octave up.
okay? It can be some nice accompaniment, can at least just be theoretically like helping you see what's going on on the fretboard a little more. I think it's very practical and very useful um, in a lot of ways too. It could be hard when you're first mapping stuff out to, to really feel like, how am I really gonna use this in a way that sounds cool to me? It depends on what you're doing, you know? Um, if you are a classical guitarist and you just want to see that so you see it when it comes up in a piece you're playing, that's very useful for that reason. But if you're a songwriter, you're learning that for very different reasons and, and the way that it's applicable is going to be maybe that you want to switch up a voicing or get a different note on the melody on the top. Um, you could be writing accompaniment parts for strings and you're thinking on the fretboard and you want to say, okay, this player is going to play this note, this player is going to play this note. Um, so many applications, so many reasons. It's really just knowing music, knowing the structure, how it works, but seeing it really clearly on the fretboard, certainly for improvisation. It's massively beneficial because if you're working with scale forms, there's that scale there. I'm kind of playing, I'm playing with the scale, but there's that inversion there, that, that shape. If you're playing any single note stuff, you're kind of dancing around those. So you're seeing the chord tones. Um, great. So we did it on D. Let's go ahead and do it on, well, let's stay on D because I want to show you how you can do it with a totally different shape. Okay, so now I'm gonna take away this root and keep the open D root. Okay, so we still have one, five on the third string and then three on the top string. Okay, so we eliminated our extra root and we're gonna do the same thing again now with this other shape. One, five, three, nothing happening on string two. Let's give it a try. So one's gonna go to three. I'm going to kind of just go through it quickly because you know what you're supposed to look for now with each of these. One's going to go to three on that same string. Five is going to go to one. Cool. I like that sound a lot. Three, one. Okay. And then we have three is going to go to five. Love that. Uh, love this inversion of, of three chords. This is very pianistic to see chords in this way. We're going to start to be able to connect chords with what's called voice leading. If you know inversions, then you don't have to jump to some shape. You can say, where's my closest iteration of that next chord that I want? That'll be for another video another time to do that. Right now, I just want to show you how you can start finding them at all and, and think this way theoretically. So, okay, three is going to go to five. Okay, one is going to go to three. Okay, five is going to go to one. Okay, so a bit of a stretch. And some chords uh, you'll find maybe technically much easier and some not not as easy. You don't have to feel like they need to be ready in your fing at your fingertips all the time. It's not about that. It's more about knowing how to find them. And then some you might find useful, some you might not. But being able to see it is kind of our goal right now. Five, moving on, five is going to go to one. Okay, three is going to go to five. And then one is going to go to three. Oh, well, there it is. That original shape that we had, one, five, three. I love that voicing. Um, cool. So let's do the same voicing along the fifth string. We'll do it off C. One, five, three. One, five, three. Skipping the third string. String five, string four, string three. Fret three, fret five, fret five. Okay. Now I'm going to go one goes to three, five goes to one, and three goes to five. Okay. That's still just a C chord. Three, one, five. A lot of times if I'm on the inversion, I'm going to see it as part of maybe like just a normal chord shape where the root is somewhere nearby, even though I'm not playing that root. So I can see the three is related to this root. I can see the root here is an octave from here, and I can see that this five is the fifth from that root. Uh, just saying that the way we're seeing it, we're not always necessarily, you know, still seeing it from over here. We're getting there, and then we're seeing it in relation to a root nearby somewhere, if possible. Okay, um, next inversion here, we have three goes to five, one goes to three, and then five goes to one. Let it take time for you though. Really let it take time. If you don't see where those things are quickly, count them out slowly, little by little, one by one. There's so many chord forms that you could do this with. Don't feel like, oh, I'm gonna learn them all now. Just know that process, right? So if you feel like exploring it here and there when you're writing or improvising or practicing or wanting to uncover something that feels like you're 
you're missing or you have a gap in your in how you're seeing the fretboard, then you have the tool to then find it. So much, much, much better than memorization, just memorizing a bunch of shapes, right? From like a chord book or something like, oh, okay, I'm gonna try to remember remember all these. Seeing how you can get there quickly is way better. I almost never played this. <laughs> but I just know easily how to see it and get there from that process. I'll actually often play, if I want that sound, this is five here, I'll play the five down here. Same exact chord form, but that's just um, maybe a more common way that it's played, because it's a little bit more like a C shape that we're, that we're used to. But in any case, playing it like this is fine, it helps us kind of see it and have that process. So next, let's do a seven chord. Okay, I'm gonna do, yeah, let's do C major seven, one, five, three, like we had before, and I'm gonna take this middle finger and put it down on the fret in between those, uh, fret four, in between the other fingers, and that is our seven. One, five, seven, three. Get a whole different flavor now. Okay, so if I take that inversion that I got before, three, one, five, and I take that seven, and I say that has to go to one, oh, well, I gotta throw that in the, in the mix now. Um, so it's gonna be this shape. Um, yeah, that's gonna go to one. Oh, a couple things changed. So the, uh, I had three, five, uh, three, one, five. Well, let's actually start back here because now I'm, I'm, um, I need to change the one going to seven instead. So I better just do it by in the order that I wanna show you here. One to three as before, but now five to seven instead of five to one, okay? So now uh, seven to ones. And this is so cool with a seventh chord because now we get a, a half step connection between seven and one, and then three to five. Ah, C major seven. But this kind of creepy, gorgeous uh, voicing of it with the seven and the one half step apart. If someone plays a C major chord and you're in the key of C major, and you throw this over it, it's gonna feel great. Because that seven is in the key, you're just turning it into a, a major seven chord, and then you're doing an inversion of it where it's just kinda crunchy together. Not great cr crunchy, almost floaty, but um, just with that half step in there. Okay, so onward. Um, Three is gonna go to five, seven's gonna go to one, one's gonna go to three. Ah, kind of an E shape there, very nice. Uh, but then five's gonna go to seven. This shape I don't actually recommend. Uh, look at how I have to, that's not great for the technique and for the wrist, but, uh, but it is one that exists just to be able to see. Five, one, three, seven. It is nice to have the seven on top. Uh, that voicing happens to be the same exact notes as this, so here's a much easier way to, to play that. So, but still cool to work these out. Five's gonna go to seven, one's gonna go to three, uh, three is gonna go to five, and seven is gonna go to one. This is um, not used very much because the seven's on the bottom. I actually, it's grown on me over time and I actually do like to use it. But the seven being on the bottom, the third inversion, it's quite unstable. It's kind of, uh, it doesn't, doesn't really sit there that nicely as much as uh, one of the other notes on the bottom. But here's that original uh, voicing. So if you wanted to practice something like this, and again, this one, I'm showing you these just for the process, but this is not idea, This is not easy technique-wise, um, and this is not easy technique-wise, so do it with other voicings for yourself. You know, what I'd, I'd like you to do is work on the process and not just try to, you know, learn specific shapes that um, that someone shows you. Um, so again, once you map something out, trying to bounce between the inversions, if you do want to review it as a vocabulary set of uh, chords that you want to have in your hands and ready to use, then that's a good way to do it. Let's just look at one more thing. If you do take a big E chord and you say, well, how am I going to invert that? Take any one, three, five portion of it. Now, I'm not saying you won't get stuck. So you might get stuck sometimes and be like, how am I going to play that? But if you take a one, three, five version of it somewhere, you you should find all the shapes that are the inversions of that iteration of the chord. So if this is five, one, three of E, well, then you're going to get a nice one, three, five here, and you're going to get a nice three, one, 
uh, three, five, one here, and then you get back to the original shape. Okay, if I take one, three, five of this, of this whole big chord, one, three, five, well then I'm gonna get a nice three, five, one here, a nice five, one, three here, and back to the one, three, five here. And these are existing in all of your common uh, chord shapes all over the place. Okay, if I take the top three, uh, three, five, one, this is the top three strings of this big E chord shape, I'm once again going to get uh, nice playable voicings that you can start to, to see. And actually, the first thing we did was the, the D shape on the top three strings. Well, these, if you take that E chord, you need to do this. Well, that's that D shape right there. You're getting all the same voicings. Here's that other one that we already found on the on the D chord. And then this is one that we used on the D chord as well. So there's only so many, um, and you'll start to see them repeating themselves. So. Okay, so that's it, lots of examples there, and, and I think that the initial process should make sense now, and that's really the main thing I wanted to make sure I got across to you. So um, finding just the notes you need, one, three, five, or one, three, five, seven, in whatever order, and then on each string, you move up to the next possible chord tone, and you do that until you find that shape. Yes, if you want those shapes in your playing ready to go or ready to see, then do that kind of vocabulary technique thing where you jump between them. But the practice that I think, the thing to practice that I think is, is the most game changing is the ability to do that thinking process quickly, right? So you, it's okay if it's hard and takes a while, um, but our instinct is to kind of take a long time on something and then say, okay, now I just gotta repeat it to get it down so it's ready. But then you lose that mental ability to have found it quickly. So if every month or so you work out something, it's a big brain buster, it's hard, and then you just get your hands to memorize it, you lose how you got there in the first place. So if you can practice um, just a new one, do a new one, do another one, do another one, and you're actually practicing the process, you are giving yourself something way, way, way more powerful than if you, you know, mastered uh, three new inversion voicings on the guitar and you can just jump to them, but kind of lost that ability to see how they're connected um, and how to get to them quickly, right? So it's totally the teaching yourself to fish instead of just getting a fish or, or uh, being given one. Um, so that is my recommendation for that and that's how that works. Um, let me know if you have any um, thoughts or comments, if there's a way that you've found or worked on inversions that you like, and if you've tried this and you feel like it's effective or a cool way to, to start to understand something that you're maybe um, wanting to work on, I'd love to hear from you anytime. That's it for this lesson, and I hope to see you in another one soon, and happy practicing.